Ezra 6, 9, the third part. In this video, we're going to evaluate the Masoretic note that the red vertical strokes are passeiks, thus leaving the green notation to be a munach lagarme. So to do this, we need to evaluate these accents. The first one is a yarach ben yomo or a galgal. The second one in purple is a carne fara or a pazer gadol. And you can see in the second word of the verse, I've highlighted that pazer in purple. The Pazer and Pazer Gadol look nothing like each other, even though they are both fourth level disjunctive accents. So these are rare accents. We need to pay attention to them. In fact, Gesenius says that Yerach ben Yomo and Karnei Farah, which always go together, have a special function of pointing out something of exegetical significance. So how do they act? Well, the Yerach ben Yomo and Karnei Farah require a munach to stand before them. So that right there identifies this combination as a munach plus pasek. It doesn't say much about this one, but notice if this first one is a munach, the second, third, fourth, fifth, there are five munachs for a total, as you can see, of six conjunctive accents standing before the carne farah. That is very unusual. So continuing on, the second proof, if you will, that the vertical strokes are passeiks is that the Menach Lagarma itself can have a maximum of two conjunctives before it. So this one has none before it, but the first one in this analysis has three conjunctive accents before it. So that cannot be a Menach Lagarma either. So we've just shown this must be Menach plus Paseik, plus this one must be Munach plus Paseik. Now, the final thing we can say is Munach Lagarme only appears before Revia and more rarely Pashta or Garesh. So notice that condition applies neither to this one nor to this one, but indeed it applies to this Munach Lagarme because right here is the Revia that it is standing before. So we have three conclusive proofs that the Masoretes were right in designating the vertical strokes to be Paseik. So some documentation on this can be found in Price's discussion of the pseudo Lagarme in the syntax of Masoretic accents in the Hebrew Bible. I also confirmed this analysis with Leah Himmelfarb of Bar Ilan University who wrote her dissertation on the Paseik. Now, all that having been said, we're ready to continue with our reading of Ezra 6, 9.